Hey everybody, Dylan here, and it is time for this week's Game Talk. One of our big topics last week in our Five Ways to Be a Better Player video was how important it is for players to offer feedback to their game masters and storytellers as a way to improve the game experience for everybody. Well, this week, we're going to come at that from the other direction. Today's topic is how to use feedback as a game master and a storyteller. <laughs> Okay, number one, feelings are never wrong. One of the first instincts that somebody's going to have when they read, especially critical feedback, uh, is to, to try to look for reasons why it's wrong, to look for misunderstandings, to look for factual inaccuracies as a way to kind of reflexively defend yourself. What you need to do is understand that effectively all player feedback has an implied I feel or it is my experience that before it. And any statement that involves the word or the, 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 the expression of the idea I feel is always correct. When someone tells you they feel a certain way, they most certainly know better than you do whether or not they feel that way. This kind of plays into one of our future points, but you need to remember that in feedback, whatever your players are expressing to you it is their feeling, it is their perspective, it is their experience, it is how they processed and parsed the things that happened to them at your game event, and those feelings are never wrong. They might be feelings that are reacting to things that didn't happen. They might be feelings that are reacting to a misunderstanding of a fact. But the fact that the player feels that way cannot be wrong. So when you're looking and you're trying to separate good feedback from bad feedback, you have to remember that you can't discount someone's feedback just because you think it's a reaction or a misunderstanding or that it's a touching on to something that is factually incorrect because they still felt and experienced that. And as a game runner or or an organizer, you have a responsibility to acknowledge that they have that negative feeling and to figure out how to move forward with it. So yeah, number one, feelings are never wrong. Never discount feedback just because it's a feeling or an opinion. That's literally what you're asking for. Don't just throw it away for no reason. All right, number two, don't take it personally. When somebody says something that is negative about your game, in 99 out of 100 cases, they're not saying, fuck you specifically, Dylan. I didn't like this encounter and I fucking hate you. That is effectively never what the purpose of submitting feedback is. If somebody really had a vendetta against you, if somebody really hated you personally, they probably wouldn't submit feedback. They probably wouldn't come to your game. When people submit critical feedback, what they're trying to do is identify the elements of the game that were less fun for them so that you, as the game runner can improve your craft and can improve the game. And you immediately start to break down the efficacy of this relationship if you take criticism and critique of your art as a personal attack against you as a human being. The most important manifestation of this is that you have to resist the idea that you need to argue with people when they give you negative or positive feedback. If somebody says, well, I just really didn't enjoy the encounter uh, with the Skeleton King. I just thought I didn't have a lot of fun because we had to kill the eight Skeleton Generals and the fight just went on a long time and it just it became hard for me to stay invested. I ran out of resources. I didn't like the balancing. You know, whatever negative thing they have to say about your Skeleton King field battle, you as the game runner should not respond uh yeah but the skeleton king field battle is really good because feedback is not an opportunity to debate or to try to convince the person offering the feedback that they are wrong or to try to convince them of your position the point of feedback is for them to communicate to you what their experience and their feeling was much like in point number one you don't want to discount feedback one really toxic form of discounting feedback is arguing with it so don't confront people. Certainly don't don't take shots at them or complain about them or do anything like that, except that if people have a negative opinion about your game, it's not them having a negative opinion about you. And the best way to argue with it, the best way to prove them wrong, if they say something that you just really believe isn't true, is to do even better next time. So it's even more clear that whatever problem they're perceiving isn't real. You know, if you're convinced that you really didn't make a mistake there, then you still just do better even better next game and that proves it way more than any argument you're going to have will ever do okay number three consider perspective when you're processing feedback you can't just kind of take it at face value it's very easy for an amateur GM and especially storyteller in a LARP situation like a boffer LARP where you have 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 people to realize that you have all the pieces of the puzzle 
as a storyteller. You know what the schedule was for that weekend. You know what the stats for every monster were. You know what the big secrets and the puzzles for that weekend were. Your players don't know that. So when they say things like, for example, oh, the Dragon Temple module was it was just really hard. We couldn't figure out what to do. You should remember that they have a different perspective on the Dragon Temple module than you do. From your side, you can see it very clearly laid out. You can say, okay, so the Dragon Temple, we come in here, they do these things, it opens the door, they fight the dragon, easy peasy, right? I know how everything plays out. I know what the plan is. But you have to consider and kind of place yourself over into their perspective, looking from the outside in rather than the inside out. What did the players see when they give you feedback? Are they are they communicating why things seemed complicated? What did they miss? Why did they miss it? If they don't mention something that you thought was obvious, that means it wasn't obvious. That means you messed up and didn't make it obvious where you meant for it to be. So you consider all the feedback you get from the perspective of the player and you kind of project yourself into their shoes and remember that they don't have perfect information. That sort of feedback is the most valuable of all because it lets you see where the failures in your own conception of the difference in optics between what you understand about a situation and what you're giving to the players lies. All right, number four, open a dialogue carefully. So this might seem like it goes against the idea of, well, don't argue with people, but this isn't necessarily an argument. This is a dialogue. If you don't completely understand what somebody means, it is perfectly acceptable for you to contact them and say, oh, hey, man, uh, so you mentioned that you weren't happy about this NPC that we had because you felt like it came in and it really stole the show. And we just didn't understand exactly what you mean. Could you talk with us a little bit? Could you maybe give us more detail? Could you give us some examples of things that happened that made you feel that way about that NPC or that plot line? That is a healthy dialogue. But you have to very, very, very carefully approach this because you need to make sure that it never feels confrontational and it never feels, more importantly, retributive. So you need to make sure that players don't feel like they are being punished, that they are being pressured, that they are being attacked for offering negative feedback. You always want to make sure that this channel keeps the players' opinions flowing smoothly into you. And a key part of that is that they trust that when you speak with them, it's not an attack, that it's not a confrontation. You can open these dialogues either in mass or a one-on-one -on -one basis, and they're very valuable in understanding your feedback. But you have to make absolutely sure that you are not misusing your position in the social dynamic, whether knowingly or unknowingly, to cause a negative emotional experience for the player. You need to remember that even in very flat games, the people who run the game are naturally stratified above the players because they have privileged information because they're in a position of leadership. And you have to remember that you hold that position in the social dynamic when you're interacting with your players and make sure that you approach the act of undertaking a dialogue with them about their feedback very carefully to ensure that you are giving respect to the social dynamic that exists between the two of you. And finally, number five, perception is more important than reality. This is one of the hardest ones to come to terms with because it requires thinking about the world in a completely different way in your role as a game master. Now, what I mean by this is it does not actually matter what happened. It matters what the players experience. So if you sent in an encounter and you know factually you are personally there, that this NPC and this NPC did specific things. They came in and they, they, they talked to the mayor and they came over and they offered an item to the priest and they came over and they kind of threatened the rogue. You know exactly what happened. But if the players, for whatever reason, gained a different understanding of what had happened, that perception is more important than reality because that is what reality is on their side. This kind of ties in with remembering perspective, and this does not apply strictly to in-character concerns. In fact, it applies perhaps even more importantly to out-of-character concerns. If you go out of your way to be nice to people, but you still receive an overwhelming amount of feedback that says, yeah, man, I, just, I feel like Marcus is, a, is kind of rude to people. I feel like he's very short with them. That means that you are being short with them, whether it seems that way or whether it is real to you that you are being short with them or not. It means that what you, they see as being short is different from what you see as being short. And most importantly, it means that you have to reevaluate your reality based on their perception. Their experience is a more realistic reflection of what's happening and is more important to the health of your game and community than the cold, hard truth of what you know to have happened. You have to remember that all social interaction, that all 
all artistic interactions, that all expressive interactions have myriad layers of vocal and non-vocal communication, body language, facial expression, closeness to one another, positioning in the room. All of these things can play into the way that people perceive things in ways that you don't predict. And you have to remember, and this kind of encapsulates all four of the other points, that what they see, what they're giving you feedback about, what they've perceived as a problem is more important than whether or not you believe there to truly be such a problem. If you really feel like this isn't true, you know, if you've received some accusations or concerns about truly troubling things, if somebody is making observations about the, the gender politics of your setting in your game, if people are making observations about favoritism and you are just absolutely certain those things aren't there, the best way to solve the problem is to restate that you are committed to preventing those things from happening and to acknowledge that you receive that feedback and to just continue on doing exactly what you're doing. If you're 100 percent sure that those things aren't there, continue having them not be there and you will fix the problem. If it's something that's been perceived mistakenly by some some strange coincidence or some strange confluence of events, that's fine. Own it, accept that they saw that thing, accept that perhaps your perception is flawed as well as much as you think theirs is. And move forward fixing that problem, even if you believe you did nothing wrong in the first place. All right, guys, that wraps it up for our accepting and using feedback game talk this week. This one was a little heavier. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that it helps develop your ability to accept uh, and utilize feedback in your game. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and share it around. We're going to keep making these game talks. Remember, there's actually going to be two game talks a month starting in September right after Dragon. Con. Let me know in the comments if you have any responses to any of the things I've said, if you disagree with any of these things, if you agree with any of them, if any of them have kind of blown your mind and changed your approach, whatever it is, let me know down in the comments uh, and be sure to tune in next week for another Game Talk. Thank you so much. See you later.